Welcome to the World Football Summit podcast, the show for football industry leaders who want to stay ahead of the game. We bring you the latest insights, trends, and stories from the experts driving innovation and progress in sports business worldwide. Join us as we dive deep into the ideas and initiatives transforming the world of football. From sustainability and innovation to player development, fan engagement, and everything in between. Our goal is to unite the global football industry and drive positive change and progress. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the World Football Summit podcast. I'm your host, Jaime, Director of Content and Communications at World Football Summit. This week, we talk about the world of sports tourism. After all, sports tourism represents around 10% of the total global tourist flow and has transformed into something that any stakeholder out there in the sports world needs to embrace. And for this, we welcome executives from Radisson Hotel Group and Atlas Travel, a Barcelona-based startup, both of which were partners of ours during World Football Summit Europe. This is a fascinating conversation where we look at this space from the multinational brand point of view and the startup perspective. And we also look at the importance of ensuring a seamless travel experience for sports organizations, which is something that, unfortunately, is commonly overlooked. Before we kick up, though, a quick reminder. Don't forget to subscribe and rate the podcast on your platform of choice. Share it with your friends in the industry as well. And if you want to stay ahead of the curve, subscribe to our newsletter. Every week, we send, uh, you know, updates, trends, everything that goes on in our events. You can find the link in the show notes. Remember, World Football Summit Asia is just around the corner. It's taking place in Riyadh on December 2nd and 3rd. Will you join us? Check all the details on our website. And now, nothing else from my side. Let's go into the episode. Well, Olivier, Iker, eh, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. It's going to be an interesting one uh, between uh, someone from Radisson Hotel Group and someone from Atlas Travel. Thank you. Welcome to the World Football Summit Podcast. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. So, guys... Before, I mean, we're going to talk about sports tourism. We're going to talk about the travel experience for, for athletes, for sports properties. It's going to be a fun one. Uh, I'm, I'm really into the sports tourism space. But before we do, I always like to ask my guests to briefly introduce themselves. And I guess more importantly, um, you know, uh, what is the role in the sports tourism industry? Go ahead, Olivier. Olivier, if you want, we, we, can start with, we can start with you. Mm-hmm. Okay, perfect. Well, uh, Jaime, uh, first of all, thank you for the invitation. Um, my name is Olivier. Um, I'm the general manager of the Radisson Hotel uh, collection in Seville, in Spain. And in this case, where I present uh, the entire Radisson Hotel group. Uh, and um, my implication uh, or our implication in the sports industry is really we, we cater and host uh, many, many different type of uh, sports teams and uh, sports association individuals that travel around the world to, to, to stay in our hotels and use our hotels um, due to the global reach we have. So we have over 1,400 hotels worldwide, and this offers a lot of options to, to any uh, member of the sports industry, let's say. And Iker, what about you? Okay. And th- first of all, thank you for the invitation to the podcast. Uh, my name is Iker Meerson, and I'm a sports sales executive at Athlos Sports and also customer success specialist. I've been in sports industry since I was a kid because I'm a currently ice hockey player in Spain and I started in the, in the company and my main role is um, to sell the, the platform we've designed for sports team that make, um, like our slogan says, we make sports travel easier. And afterward, uh, my, my second role in the company is to try to introduce the digitalization process through all these kind of um, teams and worldwide through the sport industry. Amazing. All right. So interesting stuff. Um, but guys, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, because um, sports tourism is is becoming an important piece of the industry. You know, it's at the end of the day, it's we have some data in our reports that show that it's 10 percent of the um, total tourism flow. And, but I guess I want to that's that's data. But you guys are in the space, so that's what I want to understand from you guys. So Olivia, for example, let's start with you again. Um, let's let's talk about how you've seen the sports tourism uh, industry evolve over the years. Well, um, the uh, the sports tourism industry uh, has grown significantly. Um, We're not talking about now the pandemic, but uh, just generally speaking, 
Um, and this has been driven by, let's say, major international events such as, you know, the Olympics, the, the different World Cups uh, there are, and as well as very important niche sports like, you know, marathons or extreme sports or any different type of sports that are coming up now. And uh, it's true that the evolution of sport tourism is, is really shaped by the increased global connectivity. So the rise of health, wellness travel, sense of pandemic as well. And, and a lot of growing interest in uh, active vacation in our case. So uh, this encompasses, let's say, not just uh, events uh, spectatorship, but also training camps, you know, fitness retreats and adventure tourism, for example. And Ike, from, from the startup point of view, because sometimes, you know, uh, the same reality is perceived differently uh, regard, when you look at different size of companies. So, so what are you guys seeing there? Yeah, we're seeing like um, sports industry is getting every time more professional, like through all the categories, like divisions. Like um, I, uh, we used to see like we, we had like a very big difference through professional amateur teams. And we've detected like many, many teams are investing uh, a lot of money so that they can get into the professional sports team. And that's uh, the main thing we have detected, like um, the through the divisions in the main sports. Every time they're getting uh, more investment through companies for sponsorships, people are are looking that they have a lot of um, like views on the on the um, the television on the broadcast, and we see that it's getting even more professional through in the years. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, okay, this is where I want to segue into uh, the um, different uh, programs and initiatives that you guys have. You know, because obviously when you see this evolution and you see that it's becoming more professional and that there's a need in the market, that's when initiatives come in, right? So for example, Olivia, let's talk about the sports approved program, you know? Um, can you tell us, I guess what it is, but but what was the trigger? Why, why is this, why did it happen? Very good question. So um, referring to what I just said before, you know, the, the, the Radisson sports approved program was really inspired uh, at the end of the day by the growing demand of specialized services in sport travel. So uh, it really uh, reflects our commitments to, to provide expert accommodation and, and at the end of the day, tailored solutions. So by, for example, partnering with uh, organizations like ISTA, you know, the International uh, Travel, Israel Sports Travel Agency, um, um, Radisson aims to enhance the sport travel experience with inclusive uh, benefits like, uh, you know, wellness-focused environments and industry innovations. So. Uh, this initiative really, really uh, leverages the standard of sports hospitality at the end of the day and, and ensures that the traveler enjoys, you know, comfort, health, flexibilities, uh, uh, most of all during their stay. Oh, and, and um, in that regard, um, I guess comfort is a key word, no? Uh, you, need, you need rest, you need uh, to be, at least for properties and, and for players, you need to be well rested, you know, because just to take things over your mind, I guess, Iker, on this point, as a former athlete, you probably can speak to this, right? I mean, um, because you, you probably face some challenges when you're, when you were an athlete. So I don't know if you could tell us more about that, because just to give us, you know, Olivia told us the program, but probably you can come in and say, I agree to that, or maybe I don't agree to this. No, so, so feel free. Definitely agree with Olivier. Like our our, um, our main team of the company, we're we're all professional athletes, and we we face this by by our own own skin. So so we know what it what it needs to be and um, what it takes to win a game. And and we always say as a, as players that the game starts when you get jump on the bus, jump on the plane, when you eat at the hotel, and and taking all that process as like a well needed rest, good food. Um, everything, everything organized. Nothing, nothing, any problem through the through the travel. That's the first goal. You're winning the game, so that's that's our main main objective as a as a as a company that make the the teams having everything organized, no problems, good food, well well needed rest, because that means that you are already winning the game. Mm -hmm. And actually, that's a, that's something I also wanted to ask you guys about. I mean, because um, you did mention some elements there. What does the ideal travel experience look like? From from a hotel perspective, of course. Um, um, let's say for you know teams and and individual athletes, um, it's really there are several key elements in terms of hospitality and the hotel industry. So. Um, uh, first of all, uh, team-friendly accommodation, I would say, you know, comfortable rooms, uh, as we just said before, arranged to su support, you know, the team dynamics and the rest, of, uh, most of all. And 
Then again, very important part, nutrition. So sports-specific meals, you know, that are designed to meet any dietary requirement you may need. And um, then very important proximity to training venues or event venues. So meaning it doesn't make sense for you to stay at our hotel if it's 50 kilometers away from, from where you're going to you know, have your event. And then uh, certain aspects like wellness amenities. So if you are like a fitness center, uh, physiotherapy areas, you know, where you can do the massages and re recovery zones as well. And then most of all, uh, privacy and security. So uh, just ensuring the you know, distraction-free, secure environment for athletes or teams that really can focus on their preparation. Mm -hmm. Focus. Gee, I should have been a professional athlete and <laughs> get advantage of these. You know, I totally, totally got this wrong, you know. <laughs> 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 and I guess, I guess the Sports Approved Program, I mean, you guys, do you, like you, you mentioned five pillars here, no? So do you kind of like benchmark each? element uh, and you kind of like rate, is, is that how it works? From our side, yes. So, um, and then again, I mean, you can g give more, more feedback than from the other side, but at the end of the day, these, these, these are some of the key elements that, that, that we ensure that are, are, are fit for being part of, you know, of the sports proof program by Radisson. Yeah. You can, I don't know what, 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 when you hear these pillars, are these important? Um, I'm definitely with Olivier. This, these are all the facilities that our professional teams are asking for us. They, they definitely ask for physio room um, have, or even a, a, a physio um, staff habilitated on the physio room. They need a special menu. They even have different special menus depending on if they, they play a game during the night or during the midday. They need a private room because they don't want to get mixed with other people during the hotel. They need a video room. So these are these are all the facilities that professional teams are asking for us as a requirement, not as a possibility, as a requirement. And of course, um, if they have their hotel nearby the stadium, it's even better because that means they, know, they don't need to travel anymore. So I'm definitely with Olivier on those, those kind of aspects. And they're getting every time more picky on, on all the stuff because they're getting more professional. And they, they, they think that if they, if they do these things right, they'll get an advantage on the game. Mm, I get that. So actually, let's flip the coin around because I was asking you about the ideal situation. You know what the requirements are, but what are some common, let's say, call it challenges, friction to deliver on that experience? Um, our, one of our main challenges is uh, like um, during, through all Spain, we have different locations that are not occupied with um, uh, hotels that can have all these kind of requirements. Um, and what our main problem is that Imagine they're going to a small location and they're a professional team and they need all these kind of requirements. We are having some struggles on finding uh, locations that can give all these kind of requirements. Mm -hmm. and, and Olivier, is there anything from like the, the, the Radisson Hotel Group brand side that, that is also a, a common pattern that you see in terms of the, being able to deliver? Yeah, I, I think first of, of all, it's it's sometimes uh, availability. Um, I guess that nowadays sports, uh, some of the sports events are very last minute. Let's we talk about football. You know, uh, many times you know international football teams uh, that play in the Champions League or in the UEFA, you know, uh, sometimes have two weeks prior notice to know where they're going to play. So uh, sometimes with two weeks prior notice, um, finding a location or hotel has, has availability is, 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 is sometimes difficult. So this is, you know, time-wise, that's one of the parameters that, that, uh, we, uh, that we sometimes we find kind of a friction, as you said. Yeah, because what I think what people don't really understand here is that um, the, the athletes, they're very meticulous uh, about their preparation and being ready for the event. And that's a good thing. Um, I remember actually during uh, uh, World Football Summit Europe a couple of weeks ago, one of the players that was there, he was, he, you know, he, he really wanted to understand his timetable well because he wanted it to fit within his training schedule, his rest schedule. You know, even when people don't bother about 30 minutes, these people are very, very meticulous. They say, I need these 30 minutes to rest. So, so that's an important piece that we need to, we need to consider, no? And I guess another element that helps here when you guys develop these programs, maybe Olivia, you can give more, more, you can attest to this, is the credibility of being, of having partners, you know? So for example, you mentioned the, the partnership with uh, the ISTAA, right? Um, so, so I guess, is that also an element that, I don't know if it's a requirement, but definitely helps, I would, I would assume, right? Yeah, definitely. Uh, and that was the idea behind it, you know, it's... Uh, 
um, the recognition that uh, STA has uh, assures, you know, as you said, the teams and, and different athletes uh, that Redis, you know, meets the industry standards for sports accommodation and, and providing as well quality service tailored to the needs and sport pro uh, to the different sports professionals. And, and, and again, the partnership really reinforces uh, our expertise in sports hospitality leveraging the status of trust that partners look out for. And, and Iker, on your end, I mean, because at the end of the day, you're, I would say you're scratching your own itch, right? Because you know the space, you, you understand what happened. So um, what type of call it insights, if you will, based on your experience, have you been able to apply to your startup? Um, our, our main insight is like we're, we're trying to make easier all the organization because we've, we've discovered like there's, there's plenty of professional teams that are, are out to... Uh, doing their their own trips, the team manager is fixing the hotel, fixing the the diet, sending through everything through email, and we want to do it uh, everything through a platform so that this this travel manager can make other stuff in the club. Um, we've 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 discovered that they're losing a lot of time um, finding hotels and fixing all these kind of facilities we were talking about before, and having a, a specialty agency as we do only only working with sports team makes their life easier definitely. Mm -hmm. And but and that's actually you make a good point there because you guys are working with different properties. I, I assume each club athlete whoever has their own different requirements, their own different benchmarks, the way they want to do their thing. How do you ensure that consistency of delivering top quality service? Where there's you know with with the, with the rooms that you guys or the program that you have, Olivia or with your experience here. So Olivier, I don't know, maybe we can start with you here, but, but how do you do that? So, I mean, um, at the end of the day, um, um, as we said, as I said before, at the end of the day, we really cater specifically to the needs of any sports team or athlete. So meaning, uh, at the end of the day, you know, f flexible booking options are very important for groups as well. You know, um, for example, um, Team friendly room configuration with proximities, as we said before, to sports venues, uh, the, the nutritional meal plans that, that we tailored, you know, for the sports team or the athletes. Uh, so many of the sports team come with their own chefs. So this helps a lot, you know, and, and giving these, uh, the ability to, uh, to use our facilities, the kitchen, for example. And then, you know, again, um, your facilities like storage uh, for sports equipment, meeting rooms, you know, for any free cons uh, and wellness amenities. And then again, you know, uh, the privacy focused accommodation. So meaning that, you know, for teams where you're having everything on the same floor or all the rooms on the same floor and, and, and all these benefits, you know, streamline the streamline, they like this travel uh, experience that ensures again, comfort, convenience, and, and, and Again, at the end of the day, the readiness for competition. I think it's just taking things off their mind. And and I think your your job here is to be, if if I may, just kind of be as a, a, kind of like a ghost, you know, that whatever you offer is of good quality that doesn't really interrupt their focus. Uh, so, and that's a challenge. It's not, it's easier said than done, right? Um, I guess, Iker, you're facing similar challenges, right? Definitely similar challenges. Um, um, for us, during all the years we've been working with hotels, We've, we've developed this uh, kind of quality service and we know which, which, which kind of hotels can deliver all these kind of um, uh, requirements and we know which other hotels cannot. So we've, we've developed through our platform the, this kind of um, like certificate by our own, own company that can relay like, okay, this hotel can give all these kind of requirements so we are relying on them 100% and we know that other kind of hotels cannot. So... And that's our main goal, having, having hotels like Radisson that can give all this kind of high quality and know that we can rely on them 100% give us um, safety. Mm. Yeah, I think um, w what I'm taking out of this conversation is, um, especially in a world where everybody's talking about technology, um, there's some elements that, and, and Olivier mentioned this, you know, um, it was talking about comfort, about convenience, about consistency. These are all common traits that you can offer regardless of the service that you offer. I think that's a lesson for the for anybody listening here to learn. And that um, there's a human element to this that you also need to um, consider, right? Regardless of the technology and all of that. But I mean, at the root of it, of it all, it's just ensure, ensuring a, a good human experience, no? So in that regard, 
um, let's talk about examples. I don't know if you guys have some examples of anything, any initiative, any program that you've put in place. Iker, maybe we can start with you here that actually help team and athlete, whoever, either improve or maintain performance or impact it positively overall. My, mine's going to be very straightforward at the end of the day. Uh, give you give you different examples. Uh, we we work our UK hotels work uh, extensively with football teams all year rounds, and I think what hell really helps the football teams to better perform is that they come back to our hotels. We know exactly what the setup is that they need. Uh, we cater to it, and it's just I'm not saying a copy paste because at the end of the day, you know, there's a human factor behind it. So they come in. Everything is all set, but they feel welcome. They have their regular contact person. Everything is set up and they know exactly that we know what they need. So for them, it's, uh, it's, it's a straight line. It's easy and uh, less headaches for the organization and for you know the players at the end of the day. And it makes them perform better at the end of the day. Mm. Okay. So it's just a matter, I mean, like in any business, no? just understanding the needs, Understanding how you can how you can add value based on those needs, no? Iker, you were gonna say? Yeah, I was I was just gonna say like our our, our main goal is um to through our platform um one of our big uh, pains we have is like um, federations or or sports uh, leagues they're giving in short advance the the timing on the game and that makes us hard with the hotels to have the disponibility on the on the rooms and through our platform what we organize is like all those leagues that can have the full schedule during all the day we can fix all the season through like less than a week like before before that before having our platform we will take like probably 3 or 4 weeks to take all the all the um league setup but we know like uh, many leagues have uh, this um, timing with the TVs and they have many problems with um, fixing schedules and times. And that makes us a, a, um, a really advantage on us on having a platform so that we can be fast with the providers and organizing all the travels. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. I mean, I like this angle. We're going to talk this a little bit later about how you guys are both uh, adjusting these challenges based on, on the different sizes of the company, if you will. Before we do though, Olivier, I want to ask you because one of the things that Radisson is, strong, is known for actually, and, and you guys... Uh, or participated in Waffle World Summit Europe, speaking a lot about sustainability. And, and I think this is a priority, not only for your brand, but I think for the football industry, I see it as a whole, it's becoming a priority. No? So how how have you um, explored the, the the programs that you're doing, the initiatives that you're doing that to become or to make sports tourism more sustainable? Well, I think we need to start off, I mean, uh, Radisson as a whole is an industry pioneer in, in what is sustainability. Um, so we were, since 1989, we were part of the first hotel group in the world to adopt any environmental policy. Uh, and after that, we really began to define, you know, clear, uh, think planet targets to reduce environmental footprint and, and measures, uh, measure progress that we do, you know, within, within that sustainability. And, and uh, within the sports approved, program, uh, we, we, we're looking to reduce environmental impact to, uh, uh, of frequent travel, uh, sports travel. So this includes energy efficient operations, uh, waste reduction practices that we do in all hotels, uh, in partnership with organizations that support carbon neutral travel options as well, you know, and, and again, by incorporating these eco-friendly measures like uh, sustainable meal sourcing, efficient water use and offset uh, carbon emissions uh, from team trials. Again, what I've mentioned before, uh, this, uh, that we aim to make sports tourism more eventual, environmental uh, responsible. Mm, okay, nice. And I like that because I think uh, there's, no, there's no excuses anymore, right? I think uh, anybody has to, like, you can always commit to doing something you know, to improve the environment and leave a better legacy, you know, so I really like that. So, so thanks for saying that earlier. And, and as I said, I want to, I want to discuss now, I mean, this, this angle, this conversation we're having, you know, between a top tier brand like Radisson Hotel Groups, um, Atlas Travel startup based in Barcelona. I mean, how did we get here? You know, obviously we all met at World Football Summit Europe, but I mean, I'm, I'm wondering, um, what opportunities do you guys see coming out of this? I mean, maybe you don't have to speak about concrete initiatives because I guess it's early in the journey, but let's help the audience understand what can come out of such collaboration. Ike, I don't know if you want to start with you. 
Yeah, I can go for it. I was I was thinking about this 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 question and and um I wanted to to introduce it. Like I have the opportunity here in the podcast, so I'll I'll go for it. Um, we're opening like a very big vertical in our company now. Uh, it's called a, a events vertical, and we're 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 focusing on more into um premium and luxury sports. So and we've we've detected that many 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 events competition they don't introduce the the um, hospitality or hotels on their events. And we're trying to make a collaboration through the event, giving all our, our, our platform and digitalization so that they can get an easy, easy way into book a hotel through the, through the event. And I think uh, Radisson um, gives us uh, uh, plenty of facilities. And, and so, um, I think that the people that are going to go to an event, they think that they need a high quality hotel like, like Radisson. And I think that's, that's going to be a nice collaboration we can talk about during the future when we open this vertical in our company. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there's anything you want to add to that from, from the other side. Yeah, I mean, for, for us, it's it, it goes hand in hand, no? Um, uh, working with a startup like, you know, Ikea's uh, organization or a uh, company, uh, we ad- identify both. Identify, you know, the growing demand of specialized travel solutions. So uh, the, pass- the partnership, you know, really um, allows us to enhance the services and tap into growing sports tourism markets and, while the startup, you know, benefits from Radisson's global network and industry reputation. I think this is a good example for the industry in general to follow. I mean, we need more collaboration and, and at World Football Summit, we really believe this, that if we're going to become a more professional, in our case, we believe in a more professional football industry, we need collaboration between startups and between st- established and trusted brands, no? And, and, and I'm really looking forward to see what come out of this. But in, in general... Okay, so that's the value that you can deliver, but what are the benefits for each, each of you? I mean, Olivier, we can continue with you if you want. What's the benefit of working with a startup like Atlas Travel? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, they have the expertise. I mean, they work hand in hand directly with uh, the sports teams and, and or the athletes in this case. And, and, and the great advantage we have, uh, we're sitting in the same boat with Ike. So at the end of the day, you know, we both cater to uh, the athletes and the sports teams. And uh, the advantages that we have, they pass on on us the contact, they pass on us uh, the knowledge, and and we deliver at the end of the day. And if uh, the client, let's say the sports team, the athlete is happy, then Iker is happy. If Iker is happy, I'm happy. So it goes all hand in hand. <laughs> yeah. I, I was just going to say that, like, um, happy clients, satisfied clients, it's a win-win. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we all get happy clients will all be happy here good stuff you get are there any benefits that that you know you get from working with a brand like radisson hotel group i my thing i've 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 just said what what um olivier said working with a, a brand like radisson gives us a a hundred percent like exp, um expected is that our client is going to be satisfied happy they're going to tell us oh it's been amazing facilities were great we had a great attendance and and that's a great great thing for us because that means that if our client is happy and radisson has done a good job that means they're gonna they're gonna book again a new event with us and we're gonna book a new a new collaboration with radisson so that means everything is gonna be good retention i like that word you know also a key word to, to keep in mind you know keep uh keep customers coming back um and guys where do you see the sports tourism space heading over the next couple of years what are we going to see more personalized experience, I would assume, but but if you can give us more details. Um, try start. So um, from my point of view, it's it's um, next few years. What I said before is, well, there will be a growing emphasis on sustainable travel. Uh, that's one point, um, you know, focusing on eco-friendly practices, uh, et cetera. The, and then again, technology as well is very, very important, you know, uh, like augmented reality that will be used, virtual reality will enhance, you know, the, the fan experience, I guess. And 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 in generally speaking as well, you know, it's not only about about teams, but as well then again, you know, health and wellness to tourism in our case, and that you know the, the sports and wellness will become yeah, more pronounced. And 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 then again, where we rely as well on on on, on startups, you know, with local and niche events that that take place in different uh, localities. And, and, uh, I think these summing up, you know, are, are some of the, the, the future trends, I would say. Interesting. Interesting. 
Um, I, I like especially the one you mentioned at the beginning with the sustainable travel, no? Iker, from, from your end, are you guys seeing anything different or anything additional to, to what Olivier just mentioned? Um, no, I think Olivier is on the on the point. I think uh, sports industry is getting bigger. I think in, in through society, um, um, people are getting noticing that uh, wellness and sport is getting bigger and it's it's needed for for our health. And then uh, that's the main point. What is getting? Mm -hmm. it, it is <laughs> definitely. And and I'm talking about what what uh, Olivier said on the on the reducing all the carbon and all that kind of stuff. We. We know as a as a digital platform that there are many many platforms that are introducing this kind of things, and and I think for the future, um, we know we can we can introduce that through our platform and have this all the graphics on um, having the teams um, um, uh, carbon print, and I think it's a great idea we can develop for the future. Yeah, I think um, that this is something that I'm really encouraged because wherever you look and uh, in the industry, everybody's talking about calculating the footprint, um, reducing carbon emissions. You have teams like Real Betis, you know, kind of like taking the flag or Liverpool in England, you know, so you see it all around. It's encouraging. And what is encouraging is that this is trickling down to the entire ecosystem. And I'm really excited to see because obviously sports tourism is one of the areas where people focus first. So I think, you know, it, it does make sense for you guys uh, to, to be tackling this. And I applaud that both and it doesn't what i like about this is you don't need to be a top tier brand to do this or you don't need to be a startup to do this i mean anyone can do it from their different angles and, and i really like that you know um and guys i guess just one last question i mean um, is there any advice that you would share with a football property out there listening or someone in this space listening about how to either optimize their travel experience either you know looking to their accommodation arrangements. I mean, any any advice that you want to leave the, the audience with? Olivia, we'll start with you. Okay, thank you. Um, from from our from our side, hotel perspective, of course, um, plan early, uh, book your accommodation well in advance. That always helps. Um, then again, you know, take advantage of the group rates, uh, you know, uh, using group bookings options for teams, you know, benefit from discounted rates always. Can focus on the location. Uh, our hotels in this uh, in in this case, we are lucky that mo most of our hotels are ideally located uh, for sports events. And but that's a very important point. Prioritize you know health and safety as well, uh, ensuring that the accommodation meets hygiene standards and 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 the hotel in general speaking. And and. From our side, again, you utilize all the, 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 the sports approved benefits that we offer, you know, uh, exclusive rates, amenities, uh, services that are tailored to, you know, to the sports teams and, and again, ensuring the comfortable and convenient stay to our clients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like those pillars. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I subscribe to that. Uh, just, just, just focusing on that. Iker, what about, what about you? What do you think? Okay, De definitely. Some managers are listening to us. Uh, are you there? Are listening to us? So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell them. Um, I know sometimes hard, but but we know technology makes makes life easier, and we've we've know through the through the past that technology has make our life easier, and sometimes we we detect that um, the changing into technology is hard, but we just encourage them to tell them just give it a try. Like we we make your life easier. Uh, our main slogan is uh, we make sports travel easier and that's our, our, our we're, we're going to stick to that until the end. And I just want to tell them, like, give it a try. We're, we'll make all your process easier. Um, you can take time to do other stuff through the club and take away all the all the encouraging on the taking, all the travels, doing the fixing the hotel, all that kind of stuff. Leave it to us. And, and that's our main goal. Sports make sports travel easier. Good stuff. I mean, at the end of the day, let's everybody focus on what we're good at, no? Guys, thank you for this conversation. I don't know if there's any um, last words that you want to leave the audience with. Where can people find out more about what you guys do? I mean, the floor is yours, so go ahead. I'll start if you don't mind, Iker. Um, just thank you again, Jaime, for the invitation. It's been a great pleasure uh, to be on this podcast with you and Iker and, and exchange um, ideas and, and, and different trends. But again, you know, I encourage everyone, you know, to, 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 when you travel for sports uh, reasons or uh, for any sport events, 
um, you know, try to, to work, why not, with agencies that specialize in these type of troubles and, and then again, you know, uh, use the benefits that we just pointed out, you know, and, and, and by searching, you know, different hotels or locations and, and, and take full advantage of, of our benefits, uh, that, that we offer, uh, in, in, in the world of, um, sports industry. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Okay. You get yours. I want to thank you, Jaime and Olivier for the amazing experience of me in the podcast, first of all, and. They can find us our, our website is atlastravel.com and they can book a, a demo there so that they can try our product and, and see how it goes. We're open to working with all kinds of clubs and all kinds of sports, not only football, but all kinds of sports. And I just want to encourage the managers and people out there on sports industry to make a step, go for it, try the digitization, try our platform and we'll make as I said before, and I don't want to get like saying it again, we'll make sports travel easier. So, yeah. And guys, you know, what, what I like about this is, is this is the first step, you know, so I'm kind of like encouraged to see where you guys take this. Um, hopefully we'll, we'll see more news from you in, in upcoming events, upcoming news. So I'm looking forward to, to watching that happen and, and, and hopefully we can tell the audience all about it. And meanwhile, thank you. Uh, keep at it and, and help the, Help the industry move forward, you know, through better travel experience, better rest. And uh, I think the, the entire industry will benefit from it. So thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. And there you have them. Olivier from Radisson Hotel Group and Iker from Atlas Travel. And um, more than what they said, which I think is interesting, um, just keep with the idea that uh, there's always room for a collaboration between a multinational as Radisson Hotel Group and a startup like Atlas Travel. If they are able to collaborate and find new solutions, what's stopping either your football property or your brand from doing the same at the end of the day? That's what I, that's the main conclusion. Other elements that I think, you know, you guys can learn from it, or at least some takeaways that I take for myself is first of all, the, the different pillars when looking into a, what, what, a, what, what, what does the ideal travel experience look like? You know, so Olivia was talking about, you know, the, the team dynamics, the nutrition, fitness and the wellness, the location, that's important, the privacy, you know, all these elements, you need to factor them in to have an ideal travel experience, you know? At the end of the day, it's about delivering comfort, convenience, you know, um, context, so important. Is this any different to whatever service you're offering out there? We're all looking for the same thing. It's just a matter of applying it to different services, right? Um, and again, and, and I really like the way that they, the guy has defined where the sports um, tourism space is heading, you know? It's about sustainability, it's about technology. The health and wellness space is going to get more developed, and I agree with that, um, and, and the global approach. Global approach meaning, yes, you might have a, a brand that operates across different geographies, but each, whether it's a team, property, whoever you work with, or each location has its own set of, um, or its own context, you know? So how can you adapt to that? And I think that applies to any um, sports brand out there. But anyway, guys, I don't know if there's anything else that stood out to you. If so, uh, as always, reach out to social media. Let us know. Um, make sure you subscribe and follow the podcast. Share this episode with anybody that you think can get value out of this. And um, subscribe to our newsletter as well, where, you know, uh, as always, we, we share every week our, our updates, uh, our trends. Now that we're heading into um, or close to World Football Summit Asia, we'll be sharing more info on that event as well, taking place on Riyadh on December 2nd and 3rd. And nothing else. I hope you have a great rest of your day and, and we hope to see you next time.